everybody, Darren Boros here. I'm at our Dover Court project and it's been a while since I did a, a walk around and so I wanted to do an update for everybody that's been interested in this project and to see what's going on. It's been a busy month, I would say, or two months almost since I did a last update and there's been a lot that's happened here. So I wanted to walk you around the property, show you what's going on and give you some insight as to what's about to happen here in the near future. Before we get into the walk around today, if you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. And without further ado, uh, let's get into it. We bought this building and had our committee of adjustments meeting the same day that we actually closed, and we got approval for the eight units. But the previous applicant had gone in on a waiver, and what that means is they basically submitted their plan saying, we think that we are meeting all of the requirements when it comes to zoning on this application, but they didn't actually go in for a zoning review. So when we submitted our plans, which had changed a little bit from what the previous owners wanted, uh, we actually triggered a variance. And one of the variances was on the front porch enclosure. They didn't actually get approval for that on the Committee of Adjustments approval. So when we submitted our application with a slight change in the building plans, it got flagged and they said we would have had to go back to Committee of Adjustments, which right now is about an eight or nine month process to get that front porch enclosure. So we decided to forego that. We changed our floor plans. Uh, to be able to meet what the zoning had been approved for at the Committee of Adjustments, and we made changes to most of our interior floor plans. Um, we got better usage out of the square footage. We're actually getting a higher use of the square footage with our plans, and we think that we've optimized um, the space much better than the previous owners had. So we actually have now three units going in the basement. So we'll have two one-bedroom units uh, in the back, and in the front we'll have a two-bedroom unit. On the main floor, we actually used to have two units. We're now dropping down to one unit on the main floor, but it's gonna be the entire main floor, a huge three bedroom, two bathroom unit on the main floor. And then the second floor will be um, a one bedroom in the front, two bedroom in the back. And then the third floor will be a one bedroom in the front and a two bedroom in the back as well. So we still get our eight units in this building, but the plan has changed now. We're about 10 to 14 days away from getting uh, building permits approved from the city. And so basically we're at the point now on this project where we can just go, we can start building. Uh, and you'll see that we've started with our excavation, our underpinning, and we're about to do our foundations because those are all things that get signed off by engineers and not by the city of Toronto. So, uh, and we have a previous permit from the last owners, they applied for underpinning as well. So we actually have a permit for that work that we're doing right now and we should have a permit in a couple weeks to now start framing and doing everything else that we uh, we need to do to get this project to, uh, to completion. So I'm going to walk you around, show you what's going on. Things have changed quite a bit here. Uh, I'm super excited about what's to come next, but I wanted to show you the state of the building currently. So uh, nothing really has changed on the main floor. This is the front porch enclosure that I was talking about. So there was supposed to be an entrance uh, in here. That would have meant putting in a big steel beam here as well. So we actually reduce the amount of work that we have to do by not enclosing um, the front porch area. And then we would have had to waterproof the front porch. It would have been a really tricky thing to do to capture a six by eight area. So it really didn't make sense. Um, this is where the new entrance for the suites that are going to be upstairs is. So the entrance will come in here and then the staircase will wind up through the property. And then everything else on the main floor is going to be this three bedroom unit. So you can see that uh, we've actually blown out the back wall here um, because there's the brick structure was sitting all the way down to the footings in the basement. So in order to be able to take out the back basement wall, we had to remove all the brick that's sitting above this but this is getting blown out anyway, so that was work that we were able to do. So let me take you upstairs and show you what's going on up there. The second floor is very similar. Again, this is where the staircase will wind up through the building. Uh, in the front here will be a one bedroom apartment. Um, I'm not exactly sure of the layouts. I think the bedrooms over there, the bathroom and the kitchen. Um, and then in the back here will be the two bedroom apartment. But you can see here, this used to be the back wall of the building and we used to be able to look over onto the garage, which is now demolished and gone, and uh, this is now gonna be opening up to the, uh, to the new section of the, of the house. So I wanted to show you one more thing, which is um, what the architects have designed on this building. This floor actually is a perfect example of this, because you can see here there's a, a little wall here, and there's a reason why they left this wall here for now. It's because it's picking up the structure above. There's another wall here, another wall there, 
they're all picking up structure because of the joists overlap here. But what our architect has done with the, the new build, essentially we're getting rid of all of these uh, floor assemblies and we're gonna go brand new floor assemblies. And what we're able to do with that is we're able to go two by 14 TGIs, which are uh, engineered floor joists. And we can span the floor joists from wall to wall because we're about 22 feet wide on this house. So by spanning from wall to wall, we can actually remove all interior walls. They don't need to be there for structural purposes. We will have them there for dividing up the apartments. But by going with those larger um, beefed up engineered floor joists, we can actually span the entire building and then everything on the interior can be moved around very easily without having to make any structural changes. So that's a big uh, plus for what we're about to do with the new building. It also allows us um, you know, better structure. There's uh, so many benefits to going with new TGIs and new floor assemblies, um, but that wasn't in the budget originally. So that obviously has uh, had a significant impact on our budget, but that's why we have contingency. That's why we have those things built into the budget to make sure that if we wanna make a change like that, it's not gonna affect the overall project. So we're on the third floor now. Uh, nothing has really changed up here as of yet. Once we get um, the footings and the extension poured, we're actually gonna take the back section of the roof off here. So this is all coming off and this will be blown out again and this is where the extension will start on the third floor. So we're keeping the beam here and all of this structural work will stay in place as will the front of the house. That is not gonna change at all. But from this point back is when everything is gonna be basically torn off the third floor. So the roof will stay and then the addition will get uh, put on here. So the third floor has the most um, to add to, if you will, as, as an extension, but uh, we're not quite ready to do that yet. We want to wait till the back extension is done once the footings and foundation are in then we'll start tearing off this section of the house i've been getting a lot of questions about uh, this old railing and this old stairwell um, unfortunately we are not going to be able to keep it it's not going to work with the design but we are going to uh, salvage it and reclaim it and hopefully somebody can reuse it. Um, unfortunately, we're not gonna be the ones that are gonna try to take it apart. If somebody wants it, they can come and get it. We'll give it away for free. So if you're in the Toronto area and you know anybody that's looking for something similar, they can come by uh, and they can take it away. So where I'm standing right now uh, behind me used to be the two car garage and used to be those uh, kind of half, uh, <laughs> half held together additions that were on the back of the building. And now you can obviously see that everything's been torn off. You get a really good perspective of what the building looks like now and why we've opened it up the way we've opened it up. And you can see now below the reason why we had to take the brick structure above on the, on the main floor and the second floor off was because we wanted to open up the back wall of the basement and that was sitting on the foundation there. So that's why they've removed all that brick. Now there's no structural impact and we can go and, and go in there with the machines and go in there and do our extensions. So, um, there's a big hole here now. I'll talk a little bit about that when we get downstairs. Now we're in the basement and as you can see, the underpinning is complete here. Uh, so we were, this was the old uh, level of the basement floor. And so we've gained essentially about three or four feet. Now from where I'm standing right now, we're gonna be coming up another foot because we've got six, six inches of gravel going down, then two inches of insulation with the radiant in-floor heating pipes and then four inches of concrete. So we're gonna be coming up a foot from where I'm right now, but you can see there's tons of ceiling height here. So we're actually gonna end up with, I think if it's about eight foot seven or eight foot eight finished in the basement, which is a really nice ceiling height for the basement. Um, and because they've been able to uh, do all the underpinning, now they've excavated down to this level. They took out the old brick columns that were here, um, put in these temporary support posts. And then once we go with the clear span joists um, on this new floor structure, we won't need any posts in this middle section. There'll be no footings here. It's just the exterior footings that'll happen in the basement. So if you're wondering why we've had to leave this section in is because this is the front wall of the house and it's picking up all of the load uh, above it. The brick on the front of the house is sitting on this foundation wall. So we can't take out this foundation wall until we've put a beam in to support the brick above it. So that's the next step. The beam should be arriving this week. It's a massive steel beam that will go from one side to the other side. And once that steel beam is in and it's picking up the brick above it, then we'll be able to remove this wall and capture all of this uh, space under the front porch. Let me show you that. Right beside me here is where the door is going in 
for this front basement unit. So you can see that they haven't underpinned right here, and the reason they haven't done that is because when this doorway gets cut, they don't want to pour cement here to cut it out later on. So that's why we didn't underpin this section. But this is where the walk-in is going to be from the outside of the front unit. One of the challenges that we're dealing with right now is we actually haven't found the main sewer line for this house yet. So there's two possibilities. One is that it's down even further than what we've excavated, which is a good problem to have because you want natural slope on your drain pipe and you want gravity. And if we're down further than we are right now, we don't necessarily have a problem. We just have to find that pipe. The other possibility is that this, the sewer pipe is coming in, it's shared from our neighbor's side. So it might be coming in the side here, which we still have to find it. But once we find the main sewer line, uh, then we'll be able to run all of our plumbing down here and then we can start pouring uh, the slab for the basement. I wanted to address one little thing back here and that's uh, why this has been excavated here. This is the last little section that they needed to underpin but they wanted to do it from the back side instead of on the other side. It was much easier to do it from this side. So that's why this has been exposed and they'll pour this um, when they do the, the next set of concrete pours. And then where I'm standing right now is the addition. And you can see that we've excavated down um, to this, this level that we're gonna be setting the footings at. And then there's also a, another section that's even lower than this and that's for the walk up. Where I'm standing right now uh, will be the level of the basement floor and then there'll be uh, a walkout. So eventually the, the back doors will open up and there'll be stairs that exit out the back for the basement tenants. But because those stairs will be at grade level, they have to drop another four feet down from there to put the footings in because your footings have to be below the frost line. So that's why there's this big step down here because that's where the walkout will be. So the footings will go down four feet and then the slab will be poured at this level here which then protects it from frost heave and, and that's part of the code here in Canada because it's so cold in the winter time. And then you can also see right here, they've excavated a little section, an angled section, and that's because this is where they'll step the footings. So the footings will come across and they'll step down and then they'll step down again. So that's why they've excavated this little section to tie the walkout into the main addition. So uh, it's fun to kind of see it before they get all the forms in here and get everything poured. And that's why I thought I'd be a, a, be a good chance to do a walkthrough today. As you can see, we're rolling here at Dovercourt. Really excited about the progress that we've been making so far. Uh, we have got some uh, feedback on our development charges. I was unsure of how they were going to classify this building. Uh, there's two forms of development charges here in Toronto. One is a multi-unit building and one is an apartment building. And I've had this uh, issue in the past come up. I did a triplex and they considered it a multi-unit building. Uh, this they've actually considered an apartment building. And so our development charges, we finally know the, the tally on those. And for this building, our development charges alone are $280,000. So they're charging us seven additional units on this building. And that's built into our pro forma. But uh, we finally know the answer to that question, which really helps us finalize our budget and our numbers for the project and also gives us the ability with a permit in hand, as I said, to just really start moving forward and we don't have to worry about getting any of their approvals at this point. So I'm excited to update you guys on a regular basis on what, what's happening here on our Dovercourt project. If you guys enjoyed the walk around video, if you don't mind, hit that like button below. You can also subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or check out my website at darrenboros.com. With that, I'll say thank you guys so much for watching. I wish you the best of success on your real estate investing journey, and I look forward to hearing your success stories very soon.